The January 20, 23rd meeting of the Methacton School District Board of the School Directors is now called to order. Please rise, rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, my name is William Gamble and I am nine years old. I'm in fourth grade student at Woodland Elementary School. I'm honored to speak tonight and represent my amazing school. Woodland is a terrific school. I love my school because I know my teachers care about me. My teachers want me to succeed. They are always there to help me my teachers are positive and encourage me to do my best. My teachers always find a way to make learning fun. Woodland is a very happy place. My principal always has positive words for everyone. There are many activities to do at Woodland. I'm in the band, chorus, and handbells. I love being a fourth grade student at Woodland Elementary School. Thank you for the opportunity to speak about my school. My name is Caitlin Ryan. Woodland is an amazing school full of caring and helpful people that offers activities which are very pleasant and makes learning fun. I love the people here. I was at Audubon last year. It is fun that I still get to see some of my old teachers and friends from Audubon. My new friends and classmates are helpful. One helped me out when I was absent. She let me use her notes to catch up. It was helpful because I did not have to stay in for recess. There are also great activities. For example, Woodland offers green team and handbells. Recess is enjoyable too. At Audubon, they do not have a zip line, but Woodland does. Activities here are awesome. I learn a lot at Woodland too. In science, I learn the scientific method with an entertaining experiment. For the experiment, we got to make slime. It helped me learn more about the steps of the scientific method. I am very happy at my new school. I have helpful friends at my school that gives me lots of chances to be in activities and learn in interesting ways. Thank you, Caitlin and William. Um, by way of announcements, the public is hereby advised of the audio and video recording of this meeting for the purposes of rebroadcasting. Um, by way of attendance, we have all board members physically present except for Mr. Navarrete, who is joining us via <laughs> video conference from Hong Kong, I believe it is. Uh, thank you for taking the time to join us here. Uh, recognition of guests and scheduled speakers, Dr. Zerby. 
Thank you, uh, Ms. President. Uh, before we start uh, this evening, um, I'd like to have the member of the, of the board and the, the members of the public uh, join me in a moment of silence. We are saddened today uh, by the news that two students uh, died and many more were wounded after another uh, student allegedly opened fire on them in a Kentucky high school. Please join me for a moment uh, of silence to, uh, for those affected by this uh, senseless tragedy. Thank you. In terms of uh, guests and scheduled speakers this evening, uh, there are several. Uh, this evening we have staff recognition, we have the Methacton Education Foundation check presentation, school board recognition, and Teamsters tentative agreement review. So to start this evening off, it gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, Deb Euchre, president of Woodland Elementary School, to present the I like to think of myself as the principal, but <laughs> president. What did I say? <laughs> what did I say? President. It's a little bit of a promotion. If you know Deb. Where's my staff? There are times in the meeting. You think That's what we're going to call him now. <laughs> Deb for president, yes. Um, Deb, you want to take it over? Before I say anything Always. else. Always. <laughs> Now it's a little short. Okay. So I have um, two special people that I'd like to recognize tonight. Um, the first one is Mrs. Rebecca Flaherty, and I'm going to ask her to come on up. Mrs. Rebecca is here. Come on up, Becca. Oh, you can bring him. So uh, Becca is a third grade teacher at Woodland, and although she's an experienced teacher, there was a lot of new things that happened at Woodland this year. So previously, Becca had taught at Audubon as a second grade teacher, and towards the end of the year, you can see that she welcomed a new addition to her family, so that was pretty new. And then she got a phone call saying that her position was being changed, and then her school was being changed, and then her team was being changed, so a lot of change occurred. And unlike the students, she didn't get the benefit of the Woodland zip line, although she tried. <laughs> So, um, and when all this change happens, what we look for is that positivity, that, that I look for people who can, um, you know, bring people out of that change mode because change is scary and change is difficult. But Becca, every time I come into her room, she's happy, she's positive at um, meetings. She always has uh, something good to say. She contributes. She's formed great relationships not only with her students, but with her new team of teachers as well. So that's why um, I recommended Ms. Rebecca Flaherty for our recognition night tonight. Um, the second person is a support staff of mine, and it's Miss Noreen Fusco, and she manages the zip line. She's my recess person, so come on up, Noreen. So recess is not an easy job. So her change was going from 303 students to 458 students that she manages at recess. And when I say uh, Mrs. Fusco, the first thing that people think is safety because she is always putting safety first. She puts, she is walking around that recess lot. She's never in one place. She's constantly moving around to make sure the kids are safe. Unfortunately, some things happen on the playground, and if a student gets hurt, she's right there being nurturing and taking care of the situation. So she is a cornerstone of the Woodland community because as you know, and as I'm sure you could all remember, everyone loves recess. So, um, and it can be a time that's unstructured, but Ms. Fusco, Mrs. Fusco makes sure that we have safety and that the kids are having a good time, but it's kept orderly, and she's an amazing recess aide. So I'm recommending her f to be acknowledged tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's not gonna let go. 
President Uber. <laughs> Who doesn't want that? <laughs> Am I going to control me? You are. So we can each do two. Sounds good because the other guy's on the camera. Alright. It's bedtime again. Next on the agenda for our guests and scheduled speakers, uh, we have Mr. Jim Beam, President of the Methacton Education uh, Foundation, who will come forward with uh, members of the foundation uh, for a check presentation. Mr. Beam. Thank you, Dr. Zerby. Madam President, school board directors, and everyone here in the audience, uh, it's my pleasure tonight to let you know, and hello Ralph in, uh, in Hong Kong. I can see that TV screen, that's great. Uh, at, in the December, at the December meeting of the Methacton Education Foundation, the foundation members reviewed a number of grant proposals that had been submitted by faculty members. And I'm pleased to tell you that there were four uh, grant proposals that were passed that evening. And as the faculty members who are here tonight and others who are not know, the foundation encourages our faculty to think of ways in which monies that are not covered by the school board's budget um, but yet benefit programs that benefit the students um, can, can, can come to fruition. And at that meeting, we, uh, we passed four grants. Uh, there are three tonight that were speci have specific dollar amounts, and I'd just like to tell you uh, that uh, there was the sum of $3,100 uh, for supplies and materials for the Methacton High School Robotics Club, led by Don Sawyer. $2,000 for musical instruments for elementary students who are in need, who otherwise would not have the funds to be able to get a musical interest, uh, musical instrument, excuse me, and Aaron Troutman uh, requested that grant. And also Bob Helm requested that, um, that w the foundation pay for the membership of the Montgomery County's Montgomery County Science Teachers Association for all Methacton teachers. And so those grants were passed and tonight I believe Erin is here just to say a few words on behalf of her uh, fellow colleagues about these grants. Erin, are you here? There we are. So Sue Basilic is here with me, um, and we're going to use this grant money to purchase instruments for our elementary band and strings programs. Uh, we're able to purchase five violins, um, two trombones, two trumpets, and a clarinet to use. Uh, so we're really thrilled to be able to provide the opportunity for elementary students who otherwise wouldn't be able to afford to rent or purchase an instrument to still be able to participate in our programs. The four elementary instrumental teachers, including myself and Ms. Troutman, as well as Ms. Shuey and Mrs. Bugosh, thank the Foundation very much for their support of our program. One of the things that our department identified last year as we were preparing our application for the Best Communities in Music Education Award was that we've determined that we need to reach more of our students who are traditionally underserved in our instrumental music program. This grant will allow us to now reach 11 more students. So on behalf of our students and our department, we say thank you very much for supporting our program. Thank you. Thank you. 
I would just like to add two things. Uh, number one, I'm very pleased to have two of our foundation board members here with me this evening, Karen Flugfelder and Mary Jane Barbone. And I, we just want you to know that this is just the beginning. I mean, this is just scratching the surface. This is wonderful. This is a wonderful step forward. But there is so much more that can be done. And there is so much more that this foundation intends to do over the coming weeks, months, and years to help benefit deserving Methacton students here. So uh, with that, let's have our check presentation. Thank you, uh, Mr. Beam, and members of the Education Foundation. Next on the agenda, we have school board recognition. In January, we take time to salute our school board directors, nine elected volunteers who serve as the voice of our constituency in shaping and striving for excellence in our community schools. Our school board directors dedicate hundreds of hours to meetings, professional development, and research in order to fulfill the commitment they made to the Methacton School District when they decided to serve. Join me in taking a few moments to recognize these individuals and those that have sat in these seats over the years. They are the community leaders, they are parents, they are educational advocates, volunteers, and they are cheerleaders for public education. They are dedicated to our students, our faculty, and our staff. And we, have, and we are grateful for their tireless work on behalf of the children of the Methacton community. Thank you, members of, of, of the board. And Guy, far away. All right. <laughs> and Ms. Lynch, I think we have some certificates. We this do. Evening. We have, um, I have some first grade friends, if I can borrow a term that my first grade teachers use here with me today. So I'm going to ask them to stand up when I say their name. And they are very prepared to hand out certificates and turn the tables on the board. So we have Julie Cooper from Worcester. This is Julie. All right. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sosnovic. And we had Ryan Gavlick from Eagleville. And Luna Liu from Arrowhead. And Aiden Rittenhouse from Woodland. So I'm going to read each school board director's name. I'm going to go from left to right. I'm going to start by saying thank you to Mr. Navarrete. And I have his certificate for him when he returns. Thank you. And thank you. And I'll just ask if you could stand when I read your name so that my first grade friends know where to go. <laughs> Mr. Paul Winters, school board director. Right, right to Mr. Winters, you're good. Yeah, whoop. <laughs> Thank you. Good job. Come on back over here. Have a seat right here. 
Great job, great job, great job. Mr. Brian Earnshaw, School Board Director. Mr. Michael Ryan, School Board Director. School Board President Kim Aubrey Larsonies. Good job. Okay. School Board Vice President Elizabeth Drummond. School Board Director Mary Kay Hall. School Board Director Jen Cancrow. Okay. And School Board Director Andrea Reese. Great job, kids. Thank you, first grade friends. Thank you, Dr. Zerby. Thank you, and thank you students uh, from our elementary schools. We appreciate you helping us out with honoring uh, our volunteer school board members. Thank you so much. Next on the agenda, uh, we are, we, as we discussed at the work session uh, just a week ago, uh, we had uh, brought to the attention of the board and the public that uh, there is a tentative agreement with the, uh, teacher, or the Teamsters Association. And this evening, uh, in just summary review, uh, Dr. Sosnovic is going to review that. Uh, there's a handout that he's providing to the board members. There are several handouts that were placed on the table. Uh, the presentation will be posted uh, to the agenda uh, following this evening's meeting. And uh, Dr. Sosnovic, the, the floor is yours. All right, thank you and good evening. Uh, tonight on the board agenda for your approval is the Teamster Local 384 contract. The purpose of this presentation is to highlight the significant changes from the previous contract. And I'll just say click or next slide to have you guys progress through, okay? So um, we'll go uh, second slide. So um, most of the changes in the new contract focus on healthcare benefits, which include medical prescription, dental, and vision. The first change was added language to remove retirees who are 65 or older from the district's health benefits. This, was, this made our current contract language consistent with provisions set forth in Section 513 of the Public School Code. Additionally, we made available the fourth Bucksmont Healthcare Consortium Medical Plan, Open Choice 3, and finally, the dental and vision insurance articles were aligned to reflect Me Too language, effectively tying these benefits to the Methacton Education Association contract. Next slide. As you can see, uh, the breakdown of the employee contribution rates for medical. Uh, as uh, noted, there is an increase each year of the agreement with the final co-share ratings at 18% for Open Choice 1, 16% for POS, 15% for Open Choice 2, and 8% uh, respectively. As noted, due to the open enrollment timeline, we weren't permitted to change the rate mid-service, thus the rates will remain the same uh, for the 17-18 school year. Next slide. Uh, prescription premium share. Uh, much like the employee, employee contribution rates, prescription rates also will increase each year uh, to a final rate of 18%. And again, uh, the 17-18 school year will remain consistent due to the open enrollment timeline. 
Moving on to wages, uh, the negotiated salaries for the bargaining unit members will be 3.2, 3.13, 3 and finally settling at 2.5 percent for the 2021 school year. There will be retroactive pay provided to the members uh, going back to July uh, 1st, 2017. Uh, next slide. Other notable changes uh, to highlight included uh, in this contract uh, is that this will be for a four-year term from July 1st, 2017 to July 30th, 2021. Language was added that affords administration greater control over final selection of skilled professionals such as head custodians. Uh, language was also revised to make employees more available for busy times at the beginning and ending of the school year. And finally, we establish a district-wide uniform program which all Teamsters will participate in. So in summary, the board will realize over the course of this contract a projected 8.75 overall net increase in costs from the previous contract. The introduction of the fourth medical plan and increases in the employee contribution rates for health care benefits will help to provide uh, or to help to support the long-term financial position of the district while providing additional medical options to Teamsters members to best meet their needs. And finally, there were a number of lang other contract language changes that afford the district the ability to better manage the operations and employees associated with this group. Uh, that is the conclusion of my summary. Thank you, Dr. Sosnovic. Um, as we do with any presentation, are there, are there questions at this point from the board on any matter that, that he shared in the presentation? Yes. Just two things. On, regarding the summary, when you say the projected 8.75% overall net increase in cost, that's over the four-year term. That's correct. Is that correct? Yes, and totality. Can you talk to, I don't know if you have it with you, but can you talk to like the dollar impact we see each year? Um, actually, I do have that with me. Okay. And just the net, I realize that salaries are going up, but there's also offsets, I guess, on the increase in the health care contributions. Uh, sure. So I could give you uh, total increases per year of the contract, which would include salary and benefits and all of that. So uh, from in, um, from, we'll start from 16, 17, moving into the first year. The first year, we will see a 3.7 percent increase, uh, which represents uh, about 90, approximately $95,000 in addition, additional contract dollars from the previous uh, contract. And that's that's the current budget year we're in? Yes, that's that correct. 16, current, 17, okay. That's correct. 17, or that's the 17, 18, that's this current budget. Right. Um, moving forward next year, we'll see a 2.1 increase from the 17, 18 going into the 18, 19, which is uh, estimated at approximately 55,000. <coughs> Uh, the year after that, we'll see a 1.6 increase on top of the previous year, which is projected at $43,000. And then finally, in the fourth year contract, we'll see a 1% increase from year three to four at a $28,000 increase for a total increase, net increase over the life of this contract at $222,000 uh, 20, $222, approximately, which gives you the 8.7 five increase from the previous year contract. Okay, thank you. And year one ends up being higher because you're unable to change the medical contributions because of the open enrollment requirements of the consortium, et cetera. That coupled with the wage provisions as well. Okay. And Mr. Burker could support me in that. That is correct. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions from the members of the board? Okay, thank you very much. Very good, Dr. Sisson. Thank you. Moving on to reports, uh, the Finance Committee, Mr. Ryan. Thank you. The Finance Committee met on January 10th at 6.30 p.m. All members of the committee were in attendance, as were Mr. Bricker and Dr. Zerby. Uh, the first item up that evening was the draft proposed preliminary budget. 
Uh, Mr. Bricker reviewed the proposed preliminary budget for the 2018-2019 school year. The budget contains revenues equaling expenses at $111,033,450. On the revenue side, um, the administration prepared the budget utilizing the full Act 1 index of 2.4%, along with the Act 1 exception for special education of 1.33%, for a total local real estate tax increase of 3.73%. This differed from the recommendation of the Finance Committee in November of last year to present a budget at only the Act 1 index. Administration is recommending the special education exception because of the rising costs of special education in the district. Um, other important items to note on the revenue side are level title funding, level basic education subsidy funding, tax assessment data as of November 2017, and continuing to escrow for the Shenandoah taxes paid in protest. As for the expenditure side of the budget, the proposed preliminary budget takes into consideration all current contract negotiations for MEA, utilizing the school board's final and best offer, MESPA, and Teamsters. Also included on the expenditure side are staffing reductions totaling $637,000, the first look at the healthcare consortium rates, and an additional administrative position of a transportation manager at a salary of $100,000, and continuing with the district's master plan borrowing of $10 million over the next five years. The budget currently does not include amounts to the potential additional costs for bus routing, which was discussed last week, in the amount of $60,000, and the request for additional staffing. At the conclusion of the review of the budget, Mr. Bricker, um, the majority of the committee expressed its willingness to present the board with the proposed budget at the work session last week, uh, containing the tax increases at the one Act 1 index and inclusive of the special education exception. I will note that it was not a unanimous decision. Mr. Earnshaw was opposed. Uh, the committee believed it was important to remain flexible in the budgeting process with a number of unknown factors still to be decided. The committee would like to see the final budget in June at or below the Act 1 index and will continue to work over the, several, the next several months towards this objective. A special meeting of the board would be needed on February 14th to adopt the proposed preliminary budget if no resolution is passed at the January board meeting to keep any real estate tax increases at or below the Act 1 index. Other important budget dates to note are May 15th for the board adoption of the proposed final budget and June 19th for the board adoption of the final 2018-2019 budgets. Uh, next up in the meeting was our uh, monthly financial report review of the list of bills, the treasury report, and the expenditure and revenue reports. Um, also to note that there will be on the agenda this evening uh, four budgetary transfers. Uh, next up for discussion topics were Plan Con J for Skyview, Plan Con J for Woodland, and Plan Con K, uh, the refinance of the uh, bonds issued in December of 2017. I won't get too far into that as Mr. Bricker will go over that during his financial uh, part of the evening. Um, next up was the LERTA program. Mr. Bricker reviewed the latest information on the LERTA program for the property located at 950 Rittenhouse Road in Lower Providence. He shared with the committee a copy of the proposed resolution provided by Mr. Italia. Uh, a similar resolution was recently adopted by the Lower Providence Board of Supervisors. Uh, in summary, the designated property would have a 10-year exemption schedule, whereas each year they would be required to pay an additional 10% in local real estate taxes on the additional assessment attributable to the actual cost of new construction or improvements to the property. In the 11th year, the property would pay the full amount of local real estate taxes. Uh, the committee did agree to have Mr. Taya present, as we saw last week at the board work session, and that will be up for a final vote this evening. Uh, the last item for the evening was a variable rate bond discussion. The district does currently have one remaining bond in a variable rate. Um, it was noted that the, um, the rate on this did go up as expected at the end of last year um, and in anticipation that this rate will continue to rise, PFM would like to come to the next Finance Committee meeting in February to present options and costs of converting this bond to a fixed rate bond. Uh, the committee unanimously agreed with this administration's um, recommendation. Uh, for courtesy of the floor, we have Mr. Bickelman. Mr. Bickelman thanked Mr. Bricker and the Finance Committee for a nice job of the budget presentation. Uh, Mr. Bickelman also had a question regarding um, where the Superintendent Academy was held. Uh, no answer was able to be provided at the time. Uh, Ms. Allabach also uh, thanked Mr. Bricker for a good job of the submissions of the Plan Con J's and Plan Con K filings. Uh, the meeting adjourned at 9.22 p.m. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Uh, Property and Transportation Committee, Mr. Neverett. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, great. Um, the meeting was called to order at 6.30 p.m. Uh, in attendance were Mr. Ralph Navarrete, Mr. Brian Earnshaw, Mrs. Mary Hall, Mrs. Andrea Reese, Dr. David Zerby, Mr. Timothy Bricker, and Mr. Mark Fretz. Guests were Mr. Dan Sakala from Fidavia, and Mr. James Miller from Fidavia. It was noted by Mr. Navarrete that the scope of this transportation, given the challenges in delivering reliable transportation services for our students over the past two years, the board and administration both feel that this particular aspect of district operations requires additional board oversight. Um, up for discussion, the update on the master plan. Mr. Sakala and Mr. Miller provided the new committee members with a brief history of Fidavia's administration of the master plan development and an overview of the key events on the annual planning timeline. RFP packages will be released in February and responses will be returned to this committee for review at the February meeting. Um, it was noted that planning for subsequent years must include a decision on the disposition of Arrowhead, whether to close and repair or rebuild, and Audubon, whether to keep, uh, lease it, uh, sell or donate uh, in light of enrollment projections. The committee asked the administration to present at February's meeting an initial evaluation of all options for the two buildings and properties, including rough financial estimates. Uh, moving on to the capital projects in the master plan, Mr. Sakal and Mr. Miller presented the committee with an updated accounting of estimated 2018 master plan project costs, modifications of the tracking sheet, including the addition of to date actual expenditures were requested by multiple members of the committee. Uh, we'll kind of work through these one by one here. The high school MEP project, gymnasiums have been targeted for the first HVAC work due to concerns with dehumidification. Refinements and project scope have reduced the estimated project cost by approximately $100,000. Uh, our COLA auditorium project, the committee was presented with a revised scope for repairs totaling 3.5 million down from the previous estimate of 4.2 million, which was up from the 2018 master plan estimate of 1.15 million. The growth in scope for 2018 includes newly identified work and items pulled forward from future years. It will mean that other projects will be deferred to future years. The administration has met with district stakeholders to refine the scope of the project and identify alternate resources that will help minimize the impact on school activities. Uh, the masonry project and high school roofing, the RP process for both are underway and the results will be presented to the committee in February. Uh, the TAB project, TAB stands for the testing and balancing of HVAC systems, which is underway as part of an investigative, uh, excuse me, as a part of investigative work being undertaken ahead of repairs in order to refine the scope of the work. Eagleville Elementary School windows, Mr. Fretz presented the committee with a report detailing the findings of a consultant who conducted limited destructive testing in order to identify deficiencies that could be leading to water ingress. Numerous deficiencies and deviations from the original building plans were discovered, as were multiple pathways for water ingress. Mr. Fretz and Mr. Sakala will be following up with the building architect and will provide a recommended path forward to the committee in February. High school pool. Mr. Fretz discussed work being done to determine the scope of required repairs to the natatorium to alleviate parent, student, and community complaints about excessive chlorine odor. A holistic approach is being used to determine the most economic combination of air handling and water treatment options. It was noted that the pool was constructed in 1967 and the air handling equipment is nearly 20 years old. Asbestos containing materials. Mr. Fretz also informed the committee that as projects are being scoped, the facilities department is reviewing previous projects in those areas and performing new testing to ensure that any ACMs have been identified and removed. The 2019 master plan, uh, this item was covered um, above Stormwater management, the conservation district has signed off on the flyway work pending the completion of the as-built survey, the cost of which will be covered by the project allowance. This will allow for partial NPDES permitting. The remainder of the work remains in litigation. Building projects for the 2018-19 budget, uh, the, the current list of administrative projects that was provided to the committee as part of the preliminary budget presentation. These projects are funded annually through the superintendent's budget at a limit of $200,000. And finally, transportation. With regard to routing, Mr. Bricker presented the committee with multiple options for routing services for the 2018-19 school year and compared them with the associated budgeted expenses for the 2017-18 school year. The three options presented were one, to hire a transportation manager and maintain routing responsibilities internally, 
Two, to hire a transportation manager but contract routing services to first student. Or three, contract again with a third party such as Orbitz for routing. The administration recommended option two in order to maintain oversight within the district, capitalize on first student's capabilities, and eliminate the potential for communication issues between multiple entities. After much discussion, the committee agreed to present to the board a proposal to outsource routing to first student and hire a transportation coordinator at less than a manager level. That person would oversee day-to-day -day operations and be the primary contact person in the district for parent concerns and transportation issues. Transportation will continue to report to Mr. Brichter, the Director of Business Services. Um, and then finally, the Transportation Committee. The administration presented the history of the original Transportation Committee, a group of administrators, parents, and representatives of the district's transportation contractors, but no school directors. At the recommendation of the administration and in consideration of the board's new oversight via this committee, it was agreed to disband the previous committee and notify all, all participants of such. Courtesy of the floor, John Andrews requested more public discussion of the scope and price increase for the Arcola Auditorium project. He also commented on the long-term trend of increasing population and the possibility to use Audubon as either an interim school if our head is replaced or as a senior citizen center for residents outside of Shannondale. The meeting was adjourned at 9.36 p.m. Thank you, Mr. Neverett. Uh, Education Committee, Ms. Rees. There are no minutes, um, but just to let everybody know, we were snowed out on January 8th. Um, Dr. Katona and Dr. Engstead and I sat down and met, and because there weren't, there's usually time sensitive matters on the agenda, and there were not this year, we decided to combine it with February. So our next scheduled meeting is February 5th. However, we do have a snow date of 2 6 or 2 8, depending, but hopefully it will not be needed. So those of you who do, there's a few that like to come. Um, just be warning that, I just want to warn you, February might be a little longer than usual. We look forward to a lengthy report next month then. Thank you. Uh, policy Committee, Ms. Hall. Uh, the Policy Committee met on Wednesday, January 3rd. The meeting was called to order at 6.32 with all committee members in attendance. Myself, Ms. Aubrey Larsenis, Mr. Earnshaw, Mr. Ryan, Dr. Zerby, as well as Mr. Fry. Uh, the committee moved 10 policies to first read, as you will see on the agenda tonight. Three were from prior discussion in November, five were from the five-year review cycle, and two policies, number 222, tobacco and related materials, and 904, public attendance at school events, were recommended for revision to expand the definition of tobacco to include electronic cigarettes. The committee is holding five policies for the February meeting for further discussion. They are 814 copyright material, 817 energy management, 819 suicide prevention intervention and response, 907.1 Megan's Law, and 913.1 commercialism in schools. <clears throat> Our old and new business included discussion regarding school handbooks. There was no input during courtesy of the floor. Uh, we had no members of the public in attendance. Uh, our meeting adjourned at 852. And as a note of follow-up, um, myself and Ms. Aubrey Larsenis met with Dr. Angstadt uh, on January 12th for further input on policy 819, suicide prevention, intervention, and response. We continue to work on having that policy amended. Thank you, Ms. Hall. Uh, the intermediate unit, as I understand it, is going to be meeting tomorrow evening, and later on in the agenda, we shall be appointing our uh, representative, uh, Mr. Winters, so we look forward to hearing your report next month. Uh, North Monco Technical Career Center, Ms. Reese. Um, we met on January 17th, and it was a uh, pretty, it was a busier meeting than uh, usual. For those of you unaware, there is a temporary um, executive director um, in place, and he's wonderful. Um, he is a former uh, superintendent at uh, Soderton. His name is Charlie Amuso, and it was nice to meet him and, and see all the great things he's doing, even in the short time that he's there. The biggest news is there's an open house um, from 6 to 8 p.m. on February 15th. Heard from a lot of students um, that they've been going on tours recently. Well, if you haven't had a chance to go on the tour or you love the tour, I suggest going to the open house because there's prizes. Um, and the, if you're not able to get to the technical uh, career center during the day, they do have their baked goods for sale that evening um, as well. Um, so February 15th, 6 to 8, and there is a snow date of February 22nd. 
In addition, we, um, uh, the auditor report was given and explained, and the good news is um, there, the financial outlook is positive. There was no issues to be found. Um, they also have, on February 1st, uh, the N NMTCC is receiving a special visitor, the Executive Deputy Secretary of Education, Dan David Volkman, will um, be at the school. And he will be there from 10 to 12. Um, one of the things that the school would like to speak to him about is there's a bill in front of the Pennsylvania Department of Education about schools that teach. And they want to just address that and make sure that tech centers are, are part of that um, because uh, it's an important part of the children's education. Um, if any members of the board are interested in attending that or anything, let me know and I can get you um, in touch if you, if you would like to go meet with him or you know be part of that. Um, and then there's a... Two things that are going on kind of behind the scenes in case you hear about it in the future. They are in the process of interviewing for a permanent executive director and they have had the first round of interviews and they were pleased because it's not an easy position to fill. Um, so they were pleased and they're moving on to second interviews. And um, they also have a teacher's contract that they're working through that has worked. It's a little different because it's... Um, representative of five different districts. So I will fill you in on that it has been settled. Thank you, Ms. Reese. And our student board representative's report. On January 15th, the school had off for Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Almost 200 Methacton students participated in volunteer work in various locations throughout the community. Midterms have been taking place throughout this week through Monday through Thursday at the high school and this will wrap up the second marking period. Last week the new Helping Paws Club at the high school had invited dogs of families within the district to come to the high school for kids to de-stress before midterms. Also, Methacton Minithon will be holding a wing night fundraiser next week at PJ Wellahan's to raise money for pediatric cancer. Thank you. Uh, communications, Ms. Lynch. On the heels of the Education Foundation's check presentation, I just wanted to mention two additional news items about the Ed Foundation. Um, one, uh, you may recall that Mr. Beam introduced the board to the individual EITC program, and uh, both he and Mr. Gary Gallagher, who is our chairman of the Fund Development Committee, as well as other members of the board, worked very hard to reach out to members of our community to introduce that program to them. Um, applications came down to the wire, but I'm very pleased to report that the foundation was able to secure commitments for uh, $106,000 in individual EITC contributions over the course of two years. So $212,000 total over two years and we look forward to gaining even additional don donations next year that will increase that commitment. So that's excellent work on the part of Mr. Beam and others on that group. We're very grateful to our community. We look forward to um, putting the names of the individuals who were so kind to donate on the foundation's website so that they can receive some recognition as well. Um, our executive director left the foundation and went on to a full-time position actually at the MCIU. So um, that's good for the RU, not so good for the foundation. So we'll be inter um, interviewing candidates for that position. We put out a call for interest and seven candidates stepped forward and will be interviewed this week on, during the first round of interviews views for that position. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lynch. Uh, Superintendent's report, Dr. Zerbe. Thank you. Uh, I just have two quick n uh, notes. I want to send a congratulations to Skyview's Mark Zakowitz and Alcola's Owen uh, Fazzini, who will represent Methacton at the National Geographic uh, Bee. And secondly, uh, as a follow-up to North Monco uh, report, uh, there were 95 eighth grade students that toured North Monco Technical Career Center today uh, to learn more about the programs and the benefits of uh, the immersive programs offered there. So we're, we're, we're proud of the, of the work that the uh, North Monco uh, Vocational Technical School is making in informing not only our, our students but, but our parents and that goes hand in hand with some uh, work that we're doing in, in career development here uh, with the uh, 
uh, with Dr. Katona's uh, program and uh, Ms. Smith's uh, work as the career counselor for K-12. So that ends my report. Thank you, Dr. Zerbe. Um, at this point, we'll take public comment on board action items on the agenda this evening. Mr. Bickelman. Uh, Joe Bickelman from Audubon. Uh, I just have a, a comment on the uh, middle school middle school lacrosse and volleyball. I understand this is being funded by uh, the current budget and there's no increase in the athletic budget. I thought maybe we can look into other budgets and see if we can find some money to maybe uh, um, run before and after school tutoring programs for math and language arts and pay the teachers their hourly rate for t kids that are targeted by their test data. So maybe if we look into other people's budgets, we can find some money and redirect it to uh, the kids that are identified as having some deficiencies in their math and their language arts programs. Uh, another question I have, uh, on the wire transfers list, there's a payment to TD Bank for the district's credit card payment. There's no disclosure on what that is. And if somebody's reading that online, they have no idea what they're purchasing. So maybe in the future, we can type some sort of description on what that purchase is for. We're making a wire transfer to TD Bank for the district credit card purchases. I understand at the Finance Committee meeting there was a golf ball emergency purchase again. That's the third golf ball emergency purchase we had in the last four or five months. And hopefully that the district is not paying sales tax on these charges. Sometimes when we're going up and down the aisles at the store and we're buying things on the district's credit card, we're paying sales tax and then what we're not carrying the exemption certificate with us. So make sure that you're not paying sales tax on that. And why not pay with the check instead of a wire transfer? But I'd like it to be disclosed because the public sitting at home, uh, you might have shut-ins and things like that. They're reading and they're saying, I wonder what we're buying on that credit card. You can't tell. So type it on there for future uh, uh, meetings. Uh, I'm glad to see that on the Teamsters contract that we're wrangling some uh, of the control back to hiring uh, for the skilled positions, that's good. I don't know why we didn't have the ultimate control of that anyway, but it's good that we're getting some of that control back to hire the people that work for us. Uh, I still don't know where the superintendent's academy was held. We made a payment of, I think, $3,000 to the IU for that. I don't know where that was held. So uh, another thing as far as the budget goes, uh, I don't know what the final best offer for the teacher's contract is as far as salaries. I haven't heard that discussed at any meeting as far as the percentages. Do you know what the percentages are for one, two, and three years? And what are the premium contributions for health care for the best offer? They're in the budget, so I'd like to know uh, what the best offer is. I haven't heard that anywhere. I've seen percentages for things that aren't as material as that, but uh, I haven't heard percentages at the Finance Committee meeting or uh, these meetings. I just heard uh, best offer. And the state tax, uh, the state index for raising real estate taxes is 2.4 percent. It's based on the state average weekly wage increases and some other and some other uh, public school uh, costs. But uh, that's 2.4 percent for the upcoming year. The uh, state tax index that we can't raise taxes above 2.4 percent unless we apply for exceptions, like you said, for special ed that the board's going to consider. Uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Unless I get an answer about the academy, where the academy was held. It's on the bills list. I don't know where it was held. <coughs> and I asked at finance and didn't get an answer either. Any other public comments on board action items? Mr. Andrews. John Andrews, Lower Providence. Good evening. I'm looking at the list of bills for November and December. 
I'm bothered when it comes to uh, elevator repairs, roof repairs, uh, tree service. We're always going off to uh, Berks County. Uh, it would seem like we'd uh, want to be spending money at home, and home is Montgomery County, not Berks County. Uh, <clears throat> with regard to the uh, policies, policies for second reading and votes this evening, uh, policy 902, which is uh, publications program, uh, the policy committee wanted to uh, delete the use of newspapers and uh, uh, I, uh, I think that goes against the requirements to use the local newspaper of greatest circulation for advertising, for instance. Uh, and uh, uh, while not as many people read newspapers as, the, as it used to be the case, uh, I think that uh, we're short-sighted in, in trying to uh, uh, downplay the use of newspapers. Uh, another policy, uh, uh, 905, which is just up for first reading, and that policy is a citizen advisory committee. Uh, I guess that's a, a new policy, and uh, it's kind of uh, oblique, and, and it it seems like it, it's a committee that, that may end up being uh, stuffed with, uh, with choices, uh, perhaps a lot of administrators and, and no responsibilities. And I think one alternate to uh, such a committee is uh, appointing citizens to be non-voting members of the standing committees. I also note that in the Teamsters contract, uh, Holidays are named, uh, whereas I thought it was uh, Methacton policy not to name a holiday, just to indicate the date, such as December 25th. Uh, I, you know, I think uh, at, at the federal level, uh, we've got lots of holidays that are named, rather than just uh, uh, using a date for something. Uh, <coughs> And uh, so, so those are the uh, comments that I have for this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Andrews. And in response to your question on policy, uh, because I was the prior chair of the policy committee, when we made that revision to policy 902, it is not to remove the newspaper as a means of publication of, of uh, required notices and things like that. This is um, purely for it, as it says here, the achievements, programs, and needs of the schools. So this, it doesn't mean that we won't use the newspaper, it just means that we are not required to use the newspaper, and it's really much more about publicity and press than it is about required advertisements. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment? Dr. Malik. Jim Mollick, Worcester. Uh, what I handed you there is um, Board Policy 903. Um, that's up to date, isn't it? Board Policy 903? Right? I know it is because I did a right to know request and uh, they told me that it is. Um, Plan Con J. According to Plan Con J, Skyview cost 39 million five hundred thousand dollars thirty nine million five hundred thousand dollars for Skyview according to the Finance Committee meeting minutes 
Apparently that's $662,000 over the anticipated amount. Now, can somebody tell me where that, that came from, the anticipated amount? Can somebody tell me where that came from? Because if you can't, I, I have the Ag 34 packet because <laughs> I saved it. Because the anticipated amount was the total project cost according to the Ag 34 packet, and that was 32940000 So that would be over budget by $7 million. So can somebody explain to me where you got your figures? Because I got mine from the Act 34 packet. Can you guys tell me? Yeah, what you're looking at is not the, it's the plan con pieces. So under plan con, J, the amount of the plan con eligible funds was $13,856,568 with an anticipated total project cost of $38,879,000. $879,730 under Plan Con J. Actual costs from the Plan Con J totaled $39,541,799.35, which was $662,069.35 over the anticipated amount. Well, according to Plan Con D03, the anticipated cost, according to the Act 34 packet, was $32,940. But that is not in the calculations that we're trying to do with regards to the rate impact. Well, where did you get your data? Plan Con G. Well, I got mine from Plan Con D. Well, you have to look at the sequence. In this calculation, it's trying to figure out what the reconciliation will be with regards to the state in regards to the interest that they give you back as part of the sink fund. And under that, you have to look at Plan Con G, not Plan Con D. Yeah, well, when was Plan Con G submitted? I'd have to look at to get the date on that. I don't have it with me. Well, the public was given the estimate. And the estimate the public was given at the Act 34 hearing was $32,940,000. I don't disagree with your numbers because uh, I don't I'm have them sure in front of me. You, I'm sure you can't because I've got it right here. Here's the Act 34 packet. Right here. That's a $7 million overage. So... I don't know what figures you're using, but I've got what we were given at the Act 34 hearing where this all went about, came about. Okay. So the way I look at it is this thing seven million dollars over budget. That's the way I'm looking at it. And it's no surprise to me that this thing got filed late. Because if it's seven million dollars over, I'm you know I can understand why this thing's been put off and put off and put off. Because not only that, according to Plan Con A09 of the hearing packet, the projected enrollment was supposed to be 6543 in 2015. Dr. Malik, please wrap up. Well, no. That's why I gave you that's why I gave you what I gave you. Okay. Our policy is to limit public comment to approximately three minutes. Would I've you, been more than generous with the time this evening. Would you please take a look at your policy under authority? I have seen the you policy before. The, You're allowed you, three minutes, please, please. Would you please look at the third paragraph? Dr. Malik, please wrap up. Then I'm going to object under 710.1c and have you look at the third paragraph. Would you look at it, please? It says the objection? board shall require. The, the minutes should note the objection, but. Yeah, well, just. Really noted, so. okay, okay, I'm going to read. Now, Dr. You. Malik, please wrap up. I'm going to read for you the third paragraph. I have it right in front of me. You don't need to read it. I'm going to read it. I'm objecting under 710.1c, and you're going to listen to my objection because I'm allowed to. The board shall require that public comments be made prior to each official action of the board. Did I read that correctly? Mr. Solicitor, I'm at the third paragraph under authority. You, you see that? The board shall require that public comments be made 
prior to each official action of the board. Did I read that correctly? Did I read it correctly? It says each official action. Doesn't say at the beginning of the meeting, does it? That's not that's not my point. Any item that you that's not my point. This is your board policy. You're obligated to follow your board policy as I just read it. Am I correct? Unless you vote on something different, you're not following your board policy right now. You're violating your own board policy right now. Just so I understand. I just read your board policy. You're violating your own board policy, which is consistent with what I was explaining to you before, which is the Sunshine Law. The board now is violating its own board policy. I'll give you an opportunity to correct your mistake right now. No? <laughs> I'm asking the board to allow me to continue. Let me try and understand what you're trying to say. Are you trying to say before the board takes action on any item? I just read. I'm just asking what you're asking for. I want to understand your objection. I don't understand it yet. Right. Are you asking before we take action or the board takes action on any line item that you have another opportunity to come up and speak on that, that line item? Just read it for you. It's consistent. I'm asking what you're asking for. Correct. That's what you're asking for. It's consistent with what the Sunshine Law says, that before you take a vote prior to each official action, that's exactly what it says, that the board shall require public comment be made prior to each official action. Consistent with the Sunshine Law. Exactly what I've been telling you all along. It's your board policy. If you want to break it, break it. I'm asking you to give, give me an opportunity to correct it. You're violating your own board policy now as well as the Sunshine Law. Just giving you an opportunity to correct it. Uh, you, is that what you're asking for? Yeah. Are we giving an opportunity to talk now? Or are you asking for later tonight to talk on every single item that comes up? I'm asking you to comply with your board policy. I, how do we comply? Your public comment is three minutes is up. Right. right. Well, I'm saying that you have the opportunity now, whenever you take a vote on an official action, to let the public comment, according to your board policy. If you don't, you're violating your board policy and you're violating the Sunshine Law. According to your own board policy. You do what you want. I'm, I'm putting you on notice so you know. You can either do it or you can't. Thank you, Dr. Malik. Anyone else for public comment? May I have a motion to approve the board meeting minutes of the reorganization meeting, the regular board meeting held on December 4th, 2017, as attached, and the special meeting minutes of December 11th, 2017. Ms. Reese, can I have a second? Ms. Hall, are there any comments from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor? Motion passes 9-0. Fiscal items. Mr. Bricker. Thank you, Madam President. Tonight for your approval, we have the following financial items. November and December list of bills. November and December treasurer's report budgetary transfers. As per the budget presentation at the Finance Committee and Working Session, we have a preliminary budget of $111 million. This includes increasing taxes to the Act 1 level of 2.4 and taking the special education exception of the Act 1 of 1.33%, which will adjust the Act 1 index to 3.73%. Budget factors in the current contract negotiations, first look at health care costs, and other factors as previously mentioned by Mr. Ryan in his summary of the Finance Committee. Tonight we are recommending the approval of the administration to apply for the Act 1 special education exception for the 2018-2019 budget and approving the public advertisement of the 2018-2019 proposed preliminary budget in accordance with the Act 1. 
If approved, the PDE 2028 will be made public, made available to the public and placed on the website. We're also recommending the approval of Resolution 1801, the alert of tax exemption. This has been rewritten per the board direction to include the, the agreement not to appeal taxes during the 10-year abatement period and continuing for an additional five years after the completion of the alert of 10-year abatement. We are also recommending for approval the submission of the Plan Con J for Skyview, Plan Con J for Woodland, and Plan Con K for the refinancing bond. Further, we are approving the ratification of the ratification of the terms of the collective bargaining agreement between Methacken School District and Teamsters Local 384, effective July 1, 2017 through June 30, 2021. Finally, we're, author we're asking the authorization for the administration to secure an agreement with first student for a term beginning March 1, 2018 through December 31, 2018 for transportation routing services as a cost of $60,000 prorated accordingly. The agreement shall include route, stop, and communication parameter deliverables along with associated penalties for failure to perform. A schedule of reporting will be included to apprise the board in public of progress for the board's proper adopt ap adoption of schedules for the 2018-2019 school term, finalization of the contract is pending solicitor review, and review of the board president and chair of the property and transformation committee of the board. Thank you, Mr. Bricker. You've given us a lot to vote on here. Um, so I think we can separate some of these out in given the, the magnitude of some of these items. So we'll start with the list of bills, the treasurer's report, and the budgetary transfers. So may I have a motion to approve the list of bills, treasurer's report, and budgetary transfers as presented here tonight? Mr. Ryan, can I have a second? Mr. Earnshaw. Uh, any comments from the board? I just did one comment. Yes. Since Ralph is on, Mr. Navarrete is on, uh, Speaker Ralph, can you still talk to all of us? Yes, I can, hear, I can hear you and I can speak. I'm just going to ask that if you're going to vote against something that you actually chime in and, and interrupt so that we know you're voting against it, since we don't really, I don't want to do roll call and everything, but just jump in if that's, if that's going to be your vote so the record can reflect that, okay? No problem. Thank you. Yeah, and I can actually see Ralph raising his hand, I'm so going yep, too. we're good. <laughs> okay, so are there any comments from the board on items A, B, and C? Yes, Mr. Earnshaw. Just, um, <clears throat> excuse me, one comment on the list of bills. Um, with respect to that wire transfer for the credit card payments, is it possible to attach just a list of what those charges are? Is that an initial work or anything? Is just. No, we have it available. Okay. It's usually included in the financial minutes right. that we provide to you. I mean, I think it makes sense to do that. Um, and then on the, on the treasurer's report, I mean, the one thing we need to address in the finance committee is a couple of uh, counts in there. <clears throat> Two of which are, and kind of just kind of need to figure out the direction where we're going to go with these two, and that's the field replacement account and the capital campaign account. There's some fairly sizable balances just kind of residing there, and now that the project is kind of wrapped up, except for one matter, I believe, um, I think it's something in the finance committee we want to take a look at addressing either next month or whatever time permits. And that was it. Thank you. Any other comments from the board on these items? Okay. All those in favor of uh, approving list of bills, treasurer's report, and budgetary transfers? Okay, the motion carries 9 0. May I have a motion to approve the administration to apply for Act 1 special education exception for the 2018 2019 budget? Mr. Winters, can I have a second? Ms. Cancrow. Are there any comments from the board? Okay, well, go ahead. Just gonna pretty much echo my comments that I had at the last meeting. Um, first, I wanted to uh, thank Mr. Bricker and Dr. Zerby for bringing forward a budget that balances, even though it includes the um, use of the Act One exception for special ed. I know in prior years we've not had that, been that close. So I think that's a good start, um, given that we have about five months to go before the, the budget gets finalized. Um, 
And I understand some of the comments made last month about the desire for flexibility and uncertainties, um, but in any budget you're going to have uncertainties and um, it, you know, there is some flexibility even in staying at the Act 1 index because giving an opportunity for a 2.4% tax increase. Obviously we all want lower, but um, the reality is um, you know, that's probably hopefully where we can get, try to get close to. Um, and with respect to the uncertainties and that desire for flexibility, I think we also need to consider um, you know, kind of the desire for fiscal responsibility. And placing a ceiling at the Act 1 index um, I think is a good place to be given what I've seen in past budget presentations. Um, generally we start at a higher number and work our way down as more information becomes available and we get closer to finalizing that budget. Um, I think as we saw last week, the cost per student Methacton faces is at the higher end uh, compared to neighboring districts was something I think we need to address, if not in the next five months, something we need to keep looking at as we move forward beyond even this budget year. Um, and, and also I think um, when you look at historical operating results, the district has operated favorable to budget. Um, and I think if we are able to get a forecast for what this year is going to look like, that might be help in identifying some potentially excess departmental costs that could either, you know, as, as a member of the public comment, either be used for other programs or reduce the level of required tax increase. Um, so, I mean, and just, just given that, um, where I'm hoping that we could land if we don't get there um, with the vote tonight is by the end of the day, get down to that Act 1 index if possible. And that was it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Earnshaw. Are there any other comments? Okay. All those in favor of applying for the Act 1 Special Education Exception for the 1819 budget? Opposed? Okay. The motion carries 8 to 1. May and who was the dissenting vote? I'm sorry? Who was the dissenting vote? It was Mr. Earnshaw. Right, thank you. May I have a motion to approve the public advertisement of the 2018-2019 proposed preliminary budget in accordance with Act 1? Okay. Mr. Winters. Second. Mr. Ryan. Any comments from the board? Mr. Earnshaw. Just one question. Um, given the vote immediately preceding this one, does this now become an actual requirement, a must do? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Any other comments? All those in favor? Okay, the motion carries 9-0. Okay. May I have a motion to approve the Local Economic Revitalization Tax Assistance Act ex tax exemption as outlined in the attached resolution and exhibit as presented? Okay. Can I get a second? Comments from the board? Mr. Ryan. Uh, just a follow up to the language that I had asked to have added for the assessment appeals. Um, I do see the new language in this agreement, but I just want to clarify one sentence in, in here. It says, in the first year, appeals from this reassessment and the amount eligible for the exemption may be taken by the taxpayer or the local taxing authority as provided by law. So based off of this language, though, an assessment appeal could still be made during year one. Is that correct? Yes, uh, year one is the year that they're doing the construction and it's still basically at the land value. There's been no improvements to change that value. So any appeal would be subject to that initial land as I understand it. Okay, so, the, so no appeal would be taken on any increase in value. The increase in value doesn't occur until year two oh. technically. Okay, I just want to make sure that we have this. The way it's written, it's year two that the improvements occur. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Mr. Winters? Just for my clarification, since this was already voted on by Lower Providence Township, obviously slightly different than they voted on, did they have to circle back? Do we know? Mike? Circle back for revote. Yeah, but Mr. Italia made mention last week that he would go back and make sure that they have it done. Uh, my attempt would be to make sure to go to the next Board of Supervisors meeting and make sure that that occurred as well. So that we're voting are, the same resolution. They do not need to. It was not included in their final one that was signed. That term 14 was removed from their final version that they actually signed, so there was no, no need for them to do anything. Okay. 
Okay, can I take a vote then of all those in favor of approving the LERTA program? Motion carries 9 0. May I have a motion to approve Plan Con Part J and Part K as presented? Mr. Winters, and a second? Ms. Reese, any comments from the board? Okay. I, yes. I just want to reiterate, and I know we've talked about this before, but just to make it clear, these are pa this, is pa this is paperwork the Department of Ed makes us file. And it is delayed for a numerous reasons, some of which being the biggest probably is, is no one sitting at this table, including Dr. Zerby or Mr. Bricker, were involved in those, um, these buildings. I just, I just wanted to, to make that clear. So with the change of business office people and superintendents, this is what, I hate to use the term, but fell through the cracks in a way. Partially accurate. And, and the, the purpose uh, for the, the, the forms under the PDE regulation are? So there's a, a, a interest rebate that comes back, so you have to do a calculation. And that's where the $600,000 come in. There's a calculation to see at a half a percent of interest rebate, which the state withholds. If you're over that number, then there's a cost increase that the district would have to pay in regards to Skyview there was. In regards to Woodland, we are under, which offsets that cost. So basically nets to about a zero figure. That's where those calculations and the numbers were being done from the Finance Committee. Um, this, recon this reconciliation is completed by the state once we sign and approve these forms. And the plan con, there's no penalty for the plan con J's being late. Yes, they're late, but there's no penalty associated with that. Plan Con J, the first one we just completed, is being done in time, on time. Thank you, Mr. Bricker. Any other comments from the board? Okay, all those in favor? The motion carries. Is that nine and nine? Nothing. I can't see Ralph. Yeah, that was nine. <laughs> I got to fill out the form. <laughs> it was unanimous. Okay. Can I have a motion to approve the ratification of terms of the collective bargaining agreement between Methacton School District and Teamsters Local 384 as presented, effective July 1st, 2017 through June 30th, 2021? Okay. Ms. Cancro. Ms. Second. Ms. Drummond. Any comments from the board? Mr. Winters. I just uh, want to put a thanks out to the administration and the support that we had with the Teamsters leadership to get this done and uh, hopefully we can get the other two done soon. Any other comments? I'd also like to personally thank Mr. Winters for the amount of time that he's put in on these contracts. Um, it's it's been significant and it does not go unnoticed, so thank you. All those in favor of approving the ratification of the terms as presented? Any opposed? No? Okay, it carries 9 0. Next, we have the first student contract. May I have a motion to authorize the administration to secure an agreement with First Student Incorporated as presented? Ms. Reese, a second. Ms. Drummond, any comments? Mr. Earnshaw. Um, more questions than anything else. Um, my first one is, do we have any sense of when this agreement, draft agreement would be available? In, uh, in discussions with the solicitor's office, as well as in discussions with uh, first student, we think that likely by the end of next week, we'll have a draft in place uh, for uh, f uh, the, 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 board, uh, the board president and the uh, uh, chairperson of the Transportation Property Committee to, to review, as well, as well at the same time, shortly thereafter with the uh, with first student. All right. Um, but, but given that, and given that we're now gonna have a special meeting on the 14th of February, and this contract doesn't start till March 1st. Um, does it make any sense to table this till we have a draft agreement? 
that the public could review and all the board members could review? Just given the sensitivity of this subject and past challenges and so forth. Do anybody else have any thoughts on that or? Go ahead, Ralph. <laughs> no, I, I just, I had exactly the same question as Brian. I guess given the start date for this contract isn't until March 1st, um, I don't see any reason for us to go through the language that's here in this resolution where we're just going to allow, uh, you know, I guess Kim and, and me to uh, you know, approve the final contract. I, I appreciate everyone's trust, but I think given, uh, given that there is no, there isn't the time urgency to do this for, say, February 1st, um, I would just assume put it on uh, the regular voting meeting for February. Yeah. Correct. Oh. <laughs> so just 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 to make sure we're clear, we spoke about this at the uh, work session, and we wanted to make sure that we got this moving forward. Um, we certainly can hold off until whenever we we want to, like for example February fourteenth, um, and that would uh, that would delay for a student starting the process for finding someone. So with with the with the hopes that we would have someone in seat by March first. Um, th and, and with an action here this evening, they would start the process of, of, d of determining who that would fill that role as we're working towards the particulars of the agreement. Um, our plan was originally to come to you this evening with a draft of, of, of a document, and we have been working on that, and we have it to, in, in some degree, uh, you know, prepared. Uh, but there's, it's a little complicated, and when I say it's a little complicated, there are there are there's language in the current transportation agreement that references uh, routing, and then there's this agreement, and and uh, we really need legal services to you know help us through making sure that we're well protected, aside from meeting all the uh, the needs and, and wants that we talked about in terms of parameters and deliverables and timelines. So um, I'm fine with what the board would want to decide. I just want you to know that first is not going to take any action, so this is probably going to delay us by another you know 14 days or whatever it may be. And if, and if we're okay with that, then then and then we'll, you know we can move forward. But I certainly I certainly understand the the argument overall. Right, but I think it, from a timeline perspective, I mean, if you're looking for another week for the agreement, that's January 30th, and then until Kim and Ralph would take a look at it, might be another week. Any comments get addressed, um, and you're probably first second week of February already. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not suggesting that that the the, uh, the, the an action this evening pretty much uh, indicates to first student that they can start the process, aside from the actual language being developed and something being signed. Um, so th that's all I'm saying. It's 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 just going to delay the process by you know anywhere from a week or two weeks. So that's you know so whatever the whatever the board wants to do, I, I'm 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 fine with because I want to make sure that we're all comfortable moving forward in the direction that 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 is appropriate for the district. So here's a, a possibility, and Eric, I'm gonna be looking at you to guide me on this. Could we amend this motion so that we are authorizing the administration to, to secure the agreement, but add into this that the board will approve the final contract on February 14th so that we can, we, we're giving first student our word, we, we're approving them hiring this position, and the finer points in the, of the contract can be approved by the board on the 14th. I don't think with that motion you're actually agreeing to hire that person because we don't come to terms in that contract. It's it's going to go, it's going to fizzle out. Um, I, and I haven't had contacts with first union or excuse me, first uh, first student to find out uh, what their concerns are. I, I think that would go a long way to try and help us convince them to start the process um, and also satisfy the board. And I think with the you know, with the 14th, if, if it was later in the month, I don't think you'd want to wait. But since you have the meeting on the 14th, I think it's advisable that, that you go that route. Okay. And Mr. Earnshaw, would that address your concerns? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and Mr. Navarrete, you as well? Yeah, I guess my only, I would challenge the fact that first student is going to delay advertising to hire for a position when there seems to be broad agreement on this board that we want to go forward in this direction. Um, 
the, I, similar to what Kim said, is, is the language tonight simply that we're authorizing you to negotiate the, the contract until final approval? I don't, I don't understand, I guess, why there's a, uh, why first student would delay any kind of hiring until this, because ultimately we don't even, I mean, we're not gonna have a contract in place for some period already, correct? That's that's correct. So I, it, it's really a first student uh, determination, and that's why I didn't communicate with them to know what their delay is. With with a vote tonight, that may give them enough that they're comfortable enough that it's going to go forward so long as we can hash out the contract in the next two weeks so that we get this back on the, on the board's agenda. But I, I would agree with you. I think if they've got this vote tonight, that should give them some uh, comfort level that we are pursuing the route of hiring them and not going one of the other options that you had um, so that they could start, not hire somebody, but start the hiring process, which is advertising for it or interviewing or something like that, uh, with the end goal of hiring them a week after the 14th to start on the, the 1st. Because um, that is the goal, is to have that position filled by March 1st. So I think okay. this motion gets us there. And satisfies your, your concern as well. One, sorry, uh, let me ask two things. One, Paul, can you spin me like a little bit towards the board so I can... <laughs> there you go, perfect. Um, and then the second thing is, um, I, personally, I'm not comfortable as a, uh, a member of this board with us simply authorizing the administration to negotiate a contract and then having, you know, any one or two members then, you know, sign off on approving that contract. I don't, I don't think that's good, uh, that's good policy for us. I think any of these contracts need to come back to the board for approval. Thank you for that, Ralph. Um, are there any other comments? Okay, um, then I, oh, sorry, Paul, go ahead. Yeah, I, uh, I, um, I'm curious about the, the correct, I realize this is a setup, but the correct term for, for this, these services to expire at the end of a calendar year, in the middle of a school year, not sure what the right time period is. I don't know when the ending period of routing services would be. So it seemed to me that the halfway in the middle of the year would not be the right spot, but also I realize there's work done prior in, in the previous school year for future routing and so forth. So can you just comment towards those, either one of you? Yeah, I think that um, you know, we're, in a, we're in a position in, in time right now where we're saying we want to put, a, uh, we want to put routing in the hands of first student. Uh, with that said, the, the soonest that they could get a person in place would be March 1st. Uh, the, the challenge for us uh, would, is, uh, so we're putting someone in, in place for March 1st. Uh, and we, um, we we certainly wouldn't put we wouldn't put routing in line with the uh, current transportation agreement. The reason being is uh, the process of routing. Like like if you imagine right now, we need to start doing the routing and planting now prior to the summer months coming. We need to be well ahead of the game before July one comes. So going on a July one to June thirtieth uh, contractual agreement could put us into in a situation if if we needed to break that agreement or end it at a, at a term um, close to the start of a school year, could, we could find ourselves, if, if for example, there's, there's a challenge with, with first student on the routing, we're hoping not, but, but, but thinking about this, um, could, could, we, could, could we find ourselves wanting to get a different vendor in to do this or another, another process? So the, 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 general, the general feeling of this is um, doing it we would want to have obviously uh, routing services available through a period of time where we're likely going to need most of those services. That would be in the you know uh, March through October uh, time frame. Uh, this, the natural break is at the end of the of the calendar year. The natural start would be to have a new vendor if need be in January and the, the contract would be recommended to be worded so that it ends December 31st and it's renewable January 1st through December 31st going forward as we, as we discussed in the, in the previous conversation. So um, it, I, in my opinion, it doesn't work transitionally well in the operation going from July 1 to June 30th, which is where we would normally have it. And, and I did not want to keep it into like a, a March to February 28th time frame, committing us that far into the, the next school year when we would likely need a, a different vendor if it doesn't work. So that, that's 
Um, there may be other opinions and other thoughts on that. We certainly can make those adjustments, but but uh, you know those are the conversations I had with the first student and how okay. we would proceed forward. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna. Um, I, I would be comfortable in the and uh, honestly, with Mr. Bricker more involved than Ralph. You're everybody more involved. I feel more comfortable with some of this going forward. But at the same time, I'm hearing the point related to our contract. So I'm going to make a motion to table this till February 14th, as is. Like, could it, I know that vote was tabled the way it was written in your agendas. Uh, the question is, do you want to do a different vote um, to give some comfort level to first student? So I don't think it was, Eric. I don't, was think it was, I don't think this was tabled at all yet. So, uh, so if, if it's yeah. going to be. So um, I, there's two different ways to proceed. So it's either table the vote or modify the motion to be what was discussed here tonight. So you can, you can do it that way as well. Um, so we need uh, a, I'm we need suggesting a, tabling because I, I tend to agree with Ralph. I'm, I think there's enough relationships with first student that there's enough indication to, to move to proceed. And two and a half weeks is not necessarily going to. I don't think if they start March 15th because of that. I'm not hearing that we know really when the right starting point for the new year is exactly anyway for the the routing. So I have no problem if if we want to change our processes so they're a little more clear on these contracts. Then then we should start now. So we're going to take a vote on the motion to table the motion previously. Table motion item 9I. Okay, so we have a motion to table item 9I on the agenda. Um, can I get a vote then on who is in favor of tabling this motion? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, all opposed? And four, so five four, the motion to table carries. Kim, if you could read aloud the names of those opposed. Yes, those opposed were Ms. Reese, myself, Mr. Ryan, and Mr. Navarrete. Sorry, Ralph. Um, can I just make a comment? I thought, Ralph, you being on the transportation, you're saying, I just want to clarify. All right, it's too well, late. No, 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 but I just no. want to make sure because I thought you wanted a, I want to get a feel because you wanted to table it to get the contract put into place, but it, I'm speaking for the whole board. We were in favor for a student to take on the routing. I just I don't want to delay it, but I want to make sure the contract is in place, and that's really my concern, but so in the end, that's what I'm just trying to say. So I just wanted to make sure. It's added for 214. Right. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. No, we spent a good amount of time in committee discussing this. And I mean, I do think that first student is the correct vendor to do the job. I just would prefer to see more of the parameters, the penalties. I would like more detail before I vote to approve. And just, just, just so everyone knows, I mean, that, this is fine. It's, you know, we, we, had, we had talked about moving as fast as possible, and this is the fastest we could do it. Um, I mean, we, we, we certainly have a draft that we could post up, but that would just cause, you know, more confusion and, and questions. So, I, I mean, I think this is a fair uh, decision and, uh, and one that, you know, we'll deal with on the 14th of February. No, and, and I kind of started this, so. Um, <laughs> but basically, I mean, I'm, I support going down this road. It takes one less vendor out of the equation what we have for the current school year. But as I stated before, I think my, one of my concerns is what kind of controls will be in place about keeping costs in line. And that's, you're only going to see that in a contract. Um, and I think we have the benefit now of having this February 14th meeting. If we were looking at February 28th, I don't know if I would ever think that is, it uh, would be a different story. But now I think we have the opportunity, then the public can take a chance to look at the agreement as well and get any input there as well. So. So. My only concern, um, Eric, that I want to make sure that we address here is that the motion that's been tabled, the way that it is phrased, it still has the board president and chair of the property and transportation committee as the um, finding the finalization of the contract. So I think at some point we are going to have to amend this 
motion, or I guess we can discuss that at the next meeting. Correct. Okay. All right, I'm being a little stew nod here. I'm sorry. But didn't we just vote to, ta to have a vote on the tabling? No, we voted to table it. Table it complete. Yep, it's coming back in February. 14th. February 14th, yes. Okay, moving on to personnel items. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ralph. No, that's okay. Um, I guess my question on this, and I, I only voted against tabling it because um, I think we should just deal with it tonight and modify it. Dr. Zerby, is it your opinion that we need some kind of vote by this board tonight as a vote of confidence to move forward with first student? Sorry, I was speaking with the solicitor. <laughs> All right, so here's, so my question is this. Do we need some kind of action by this board tonight as a vote of confidence in first student that they can go ahead and proceed to uh, try to get somebody on board by March 1st? Listen, my, my opinion right now is uh, let us do the work to get the contract in place. I think, um, you know, we're going to, uh, you know, it's going to be a two-week delay. Um, I will speak with uh, first student. We'll have the conversations. Um, it's possible, you know, th you know, our relationship is, is strong enough that it's possible for us to do other things. I'm just telling you, as of this moment, um, it, it's likely going to delay it two weeks. But in for the, for this for the uh, the long term uh, well being of this setup, two weeks is, in my opinion, right now is is time well spent to put a, a good document together and to make sure that every member of this board is comfortable moving forward because it's the whole purpose that we have now renamed uh, the property committee to be both property and transportation to ensure that uh, you know together we can address uh, the challenges uh, with transportation and, and just allow us to work with the solicitor we'll get drafts to you as soon as we can um, but we, we do we do want to have this buttoned up and ready to go for the 14th that's my recommendation at this point so moving on to personnel items dr. Sesnovic thank you madam president uh, for the board's consideration tonight you have two resignations professional two resignation classified, uh, three employment classified, one change of status professional, one change of status classified, five uncompensated leave uh, professional, two uncompensated leave classified. Uh, there are two supplemental contracts. Uh, the approval of uh, Ms. Paroli for the classified substitute list the list of volunteers and the job description for the program coordinator. Does anyone want to take any of these personnel items separately? Okay. So may I have a motion to approve all personnel items as presented? Um, wait, one second. Well, let's get the motion first and then we can okay. go ahead with the comments. So, may I have a motion for the personnel items as presented? Okay, Ms. Reese and Ms. Drummond, you can be the second. And now, any comments from the board? I would just like to recognize Judy Schofield on her retirement. Um, she is an institution at Woodland and she is going to leave tough shoes to fill. And I just wish her a very happy retirement. And I just wanted to acknowledge, um, when you sit up here and make decisions like furloughing staff, it's difficult. So I wanted to thank Mr. Jewers for his time and his patience with us. I'm sure it wasn't easy. And I'm glad to see this on the agenda this evening. Thank you. I will say it's been a few years since I've seen you. I almost didn't recognize you. Yeah. Are there any further comments from the board? No. Okay, seeing none, can I have a vote to approve all of the personnel items as presented? Okay, the motion carries 9 0. Curriculum and programs, Dr. Katona, I don't see anything listed. We have no items for approval this month. Okay, thank you. Policy, Dr. Zerby. Thank you, Ms. President. Um, for for your uh, uh, approval this evening, we have uh, 
12 policies under second reading. We have policy 103, uh, non-discrimination in school and classroom practices. Policy 1031, non-discrimination in qualified students with disabilities. Policy 104, non-discrimination in employment practices. Policy 150, Title I, comparability of services. Ti uh, policy 248, unlawful harassment of students. It's a repealed policy. 348 is un unlawful harassment of employees. It's a repealed policy. Uh, policy 706, uh, property records. Policy 830, breach of personal information. Policy 901, public relations. Policy 902, public publications program. Policy 908, relations with parents. And 909, municipal government. Thank you, Dr. Zervi. May I have a motion to approve the second reading policies as presented here? Ms. Reese, may I get a second? This is Hall. Any comments from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving these second reading policies as presented. Okay, the motion carries 9-0. Uh, gifts and donations, Dr. Zerby? There are 12 gifts uh, listed. Uh, we even accept a gift of $150 from Gregory and Ann Pelicano for a backpack program at Methacton High School. Accept a gift of $1,000 from Patient First for Arrowhead Elementary School. Accept a gift of $5,550 from the Methacton Education Foundation for the Robotics Elementary Music Program Science Teachers Association membership. Accept a gift of $175 by an anonymous donor to applied cafeteria accounts with negative balances on free and reduced students. Uh, number five, accept a gift of two uh, 1970 Triumph uh, Spitfires and extra parts from uh, Michael Kempster for the Methacton High School Robotics Club, the value of $3,000. Six, uh, accept the gift of $50 from Emma and Jeffrey Beckers for uh, for the Methacton High School Robotics Club. And number seven, accept a gift of $1,000 from Underwater Construction Corporation, Bill Feely for the Methacton Electro Electric Car Club. Eight, accept a gift of $91.94 by anonymous donor to be applied to cafeteria accounts uh, with negative balances on free and reduced students. Nine, accept a gift of two equipment storage boxes from Dean McGowan for use in the athletic fields of Methacton High School, value of $400. For 10, accept the gift of breakfast sandwiches from Chick-fil-A for Methacton High School, Martin Luther King Day of Service uh, breakfast, value of $510. 11, accept a gift of beverages from Wawa to Methacton High School for the same event, uh, served a breakfast, breakfast of value of $48.74. And last, Accept the gift of one refrigerator from Stanley Ogden uh, for Skyview Upper Elementary School for the use of the autistic support class, a value of $500. And I'll, I'll also do trips, if that's okay. There are, there are uh, three trips on the agenda. Approve the trip for Methacton High School Girls Track and Field to Ocean Breeze Athletic Complex, Staten Island, January 27th uh, through the 29th. Uh, registration a fee of $280 is the cost to the district. To approve a trip to Methac of Methacton High School Grade 10 course to the 2018 District 11 Course Festival at Springford Area High School, Roarsford for January 24th through the 26th, 2018, no cost to the district. And third, approve a trip uh, for the Methacton High School uh, to 2018 District 11 Orchestra Festival at Penridge High School uh, on February 8th through the 10th, cost to the district $488.60. That includes a $350 registration fee and $138 for one substitute. In addition, on this area, we have the MECIU board representative. We approve the appointment of Mr. Paul Winters to serve as MCIU representative to fill the unexpired term uh, through June 30th, 2018. We have the North Monco Technical Career Center representative approve the appointment of Elizabeth Drummond to serve as the representative on the North Monco Technical Career Center, a joint operating committee uh, to fill the unexpired term through December of 2018. And letter E, our COLA PIAA uh, program addition. Authorize the administration to proceed with the implementation of girls volleyball and boys lacrosse uh, for the start of the 2018-19 school term at our COLA intermediate school under a two-year probationary period. Thank you, Dr. Zerby. Um, does anyone want to take any of these items separately? Paul, you wanted to take one of these separately? I would like to take C and um, I think we should take E separately. 
that make sense? Okay. So can I get a motion to approve the gifts and donations and trips as presented here this evening? Mr. Earnshaw, in a second? Mr. Ryan? Okay, any comments on A and B? I would just like to note um, the $1,000 gift from Patient First to Arrowhead Elementary. I'm not sure if everyone knows that was used for the um, smart water fountains that have the sensors that the children can refill their own. That is what was used, and my son was very excited to receive it. <laughs> Any other comments on items A and B? Seeing none. All those in favor of approving the gifts and donations and trips as presented here. Any opposed? No. Nine zero. <coughs> May I have a motion to approve the appointment of Paul Winters to serve as MCIU representative as presented? <laughs> Ms. Reese and a second. Ms. Drummond. Any comments? No, just that I we're lucky to have Mr. Winters there. I did want that, but I was afraid that I couldn't add one more thing to my plate. So I'll be looking forward to your report. Okay, any other comments from the board? Seeing none, can I have a vote of all those in favor of approving appointment of Paul Winters to serve as the MCIU representative for Methacton? All opposed? Abstain? <laughs> Mr. Winters is abstaining, <laughs> modest to a fault. You don't have to. It's up to you. Okay. Can I have a motion to approve the appointment of Elizabeth Drummond to serve as representative on the North Monco Technical Career Center Joint Operating Committee to fill the unexpired term through December 2018? Miss Reese, and Miss Hall. Any comments from the board? All right, all those in favor? You can vote for yourself. <laughs> all right, 9-0. And may I have a motion to approve the implementation of the girls volleyball and boys lacrosse programs at Arcola as presented? Is there a second? Comment from the board. Just a couple questions. Um, I understand that the startup costs are going to be funded now from the 2016 or 2017-18 budget. Is that correct? Through yes, what we were able to do, uh, Mr. After the work session and uh, from from the direction that the board had given us, uh, Mr. Brooker met with uh, Dr. Spiewak. They reviewed the the uh, startup cost and the annual cost, and determined that within the current budget, because of the uh, uh, under subscription of participation by students in the football program as well as uh, the um, uh, um, the fact that uh, there were there were play there were several sports that were budgeted for to to participate in playoffs and and they did not as well as a reduction in cost in uniforms uh, as part of uh, their purchases throughout the year uh, they're able to fund the startup cost which is, was an updated amount that we provided to the board from the original presentation, and I just want to make sure that yeah. I reflect that number for, okay. for you. I just want to make sure I got it right. So just bear with me. I know I have it here. Okay. So the original the original cost as presented by Dr. Spiewak for the startup cost was eighteen four ninety five 
and the the startup cost has now been uh, re recalculated with Mr. Bricker's help and Dr. Spielbach's input to 15, 5, 10. Okay. Um, so that will that will allow us to uh, cover the startup cost for Ocola uh, through the current 2017-18 budget. Okay. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just two comments. One, and, and uh, I, d I do know that uh, Paul said, and Dr. Spiewak said he's going to come forward with some clubs, as uh, as we talked about a little bit. But also, I'm a little concerned, and I know that you're probably on the scent of this, Tim, that it's not one big athletic budget that needs to be, it needs to be managed at a lower level, not just at just one high level, I swap money around when I need it, and just assume that that's acceptable. So I, I would want to just point that out. I'm glad we're able to find a way to support these additional programs, but there's a presumption here that I want to make sure that we start the railing in here a little bit, if you get my point. And just to get it, going through the exercise with Dr. Speedwack with regards to this, we've come up with new uh, forms for the athletic groups to complete with regards to their budget, so they're a little bit more detailed and a little bit less budgeted based on a larger number, but more detail as to coaches, officials, and supplies they actually need. We're also working on a uniform schedule that we'll be able to outlay, so you'll see the five-year schedule, and we'll know where we stand within that. Are there any other comments? All those in favor of approving the implementation of girls volleyball and boys lacrosse as presented? Okay, the motion carries 9-0. Dates for board members' calendars. We have a February 5th Education Committee meeting. As Ms. Reese mentioned, there are also snow dates on the schedule for that. February 7th, we'll have the Policy Committee. February 12th, Property and Transportation Committee. February 14th, the Finance Committee meeting. And as noted earlier, we will have a special meeting of the board that evening for um, necessary business. Are there, is there any old business for this evening? Um, under new business, we have a resolution that was brought to my attention this week. Um, I apologize for adding this since the work session. We are um, have a motion, or I'm sorry, we have on the agenda to approve the resolution 2018-02 opposing the Education Savings Account ESA voucher program under Senate Bill 2 and any other legislation or any effort by the General Assembly to implement tuition vouchers or any other program that would have an effect of a tuition voucher program and conveys the importance of supporting and improving the quality of all public schools in the Commonwealth. <coughs> Mr. Ryan. Thank you, Kim, and thank you for adding this to the agenda. Um, as the PSBA liaison, um, and as a Methacton School Board Director, it's not just you know our students in Methacton that we are here to advocate for, but we're also here to advocate for public education across the state of Pennsylvania. So this um, had come up in the last legislative year um, in September and, and hadn't gotten much further. Um, there is word that there will be talk in the first couple of weeks of February where this will come back out. Um, I have before me a letter from Jonathan D. Berger, Director of Government Affairs from PSBA, that was sent to the members of the Pennsylvania Senate Education Committee. Um, it's a five-page letter. I won't read it all, but I do have some excerpts in here just for the public's notice and uh, for the board just as, you know, where they stand. And like I said, as the PSBA liaison, I thought this was important to bring to the full board. Uh, this legislation would establish a new voucher system called Education Savings Accounts, ESA, which would benefit non-public schools while causing significant, if not irreparable, harm to public schools and the educational opportunities of the students served in those schools. ESA proposals have been introduced in various states across the country and have been dubbed by the NCSL as the next generation of vouchers. Under Senate Bill 2, students in grades K through 12 residing in the attendance boundary of a quote unquote low achieving public school, which would be considered in the bottom 15% of schools, can receive funds through an ESA to pay for tuition at a non-public school and other qualified expenses. The money used to fund these ESAs is taken from the state subsidies of school districts in which students receive ESAs reside. 
by diverting state subsidies from the school districts in which these low achieving public schools are located. This bill is reducing fair access to educational opportunities for students choosing to remain in the school district. Many of these schools are in high poverty school districts that are struggling financially and which cannot afford to lose precious resources. Later goes on to say, further this legislation will cause great fiscal distress to school districts by making it almost impossible for them to accurately create an annual budget. The bill contains no deadlines or timelines for students and parents to follow in order to take advantage of ESAs each year, nor are they required to notify the school district. Beyond school district financial concerns, this bill allows taxpayers funding with almost zero program accountability, either financially or academically. While the bill allows audits of ESAs, these audits are optional, not regularly or even occasionally required, and no further financial oversight is put in place to prevent fraud and abuse. So like I said, this is just an excerpt from that letter, but I do think it's important as a, as a board that we, we pass this resolution um, and with the assumption that this, this passed this evening, um, I would like to direct the school district to send these to our local legislators as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Any other comments? Uh, yeah, I appreciate, uh, Mike, you, you putting on this and, and doing a quick research and, and seeing what's happening in Ohio this week also. Um, it's interesting timing. So uh, a neighboring, neighboring state with similar um, oversight issues is, is of concern. Mr. Navarrete. Um, yeah, Mike, I also like to thank you for bringing this forward. Um, I think uh, it, the, 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 what you, the excerpts that you read from that letter, I think, lay out exactly why this is a bad idea. I'd also like to point out, um, I think it's disappointing that our own representative, John Rafferty, who sat on this very Mathacton School Board, um, has attached his name uh, to yet another tuition voucher type of program. He did it back in 2011. Um, it's disappointing. I think, uh, I think as a board, I think it's time for us to have much greater engagement with our, uh, with our elected officials in Harrisburg um, where we can prevent these kind of things from going forward. Thank you, Mr. Navarrete. Do we have any other comments? Mr. Earnshaw. Um, just a couple things. I mean, I understand the point and appreciate Mike for bringing this forward. And um, the way Senate Bill 2, from when I've read about it in the limited time that I've had, had it, um, the funding mechanism really has a negative impact on public schools. Um, just the way that it takes out a co some calculation of cost per student when most of school district costs are kind of of a fixed nature where if you take $20,000 out of a school district, there's not a $20,000 immediate cost reduction. Uh, it's kind of like happens in cliffs, if you will. Um, the one concern I have with this resolution, though, is that it's in what is resolved in the resolution statement itself, it's somewhat open-ended, kind of, it opposes Senate Bill 2, which I'd be fine with, but then it says, any other legislation or effort of the General Assembly to implement tuition vouchers or any other program that would be effective of a tuition voucher program. It, it see, just seems kind of generic to me. Um, it's kind of a catch-all. You never know what kind of program it could be. Um, generally, vouchers tend to have the same impact, but you just don't know the details until you actually see them. So that, I have somewhat of a concern just making a blanket statement that we're kind of opposed to everything that's, you know, but not knowing the detail of the terms. I can certainly appreciate that, and I think um, in the same vein, there's, prob there's nothing to stop us from if a good voucher program comes along, we could adopt a similar resolution saying that we are in favor of it or, or repealing this one. Um, so I, I do hear what you're, what you're saying, but um, I think, I know in the time that I've been paying attention to public education, I've yet to see a voucher program that I've been a fan of. So um, I would be okay with moving forward with this, even as it's written. No, understood, point taken. Yeah. Um, is there any other comment? Okay. Um, so then, can I get a motion? We didn't take a motion yet, did we? No. Okay, can I get a motion to approve resolution 2018-02, opposing the education savings account voucher program under Senate Bill 2, 
and any other legislation or any effort by the General Assembly to implement tuition vouchers or any other program that would have an effect of a tuition voucher program and conveys the importance of supporting and improving the quality of all public schools in the Commonwealth. Mr. Winters, Mr. Ryan, can I have a vote? Motion carries 9-0. And again, Mr. Ryan, thank you for bringing this forward and um, we can work, um, you and I can communicate about how we want to, um, I guess, carry this out into our, our state representatives and, and the media and such. Thank you. Um, this isn't really new business, but I just wanted to mention, um, we haven't really discussed it publicly. There used to be one home and school liaison, and we've decided to kind of, since many people sitting at this table have been part of home and school, we've decided to take turns. So, and go, go to meetings as our schedule allows or, or what have you. So. Um, we have sent out, or I should say, Madam President has sent out the schedule and we're going to sign up. So I just wanted to make it known that if you see one of us at the meetings and we'll make sure we introduce ourselves and know that it'll be a few of us rather than just one. Thank you, Ms. Reese. Um, at this time, we'll take courtesy of the floor. Mr. Bickelman. I'm Joe Bickelman from Audubon. I'd just like to uh, make a comment. I'd like to congratulate the new board members on their first uh, action um, meeting. And um, my observation, I see, a lot of, I see a lot of great potential here from this board. I, I hear a lot of good discussion. I hear a lot of good questions. I hear a lot of good digging for information as, you know, things like Paul Winters wanting a detailed budget coming up from... <laughs> coming up from the grassroots up through to the business manager so that he can put a hand on, handle on the budget. I hear questions like that in finance committee meetings and uh, I think this uh, board is going to take this school district back to uh, you know, where it belongs and uh, I'm real happy with the uh, people that make up this board. Uh, the other thing I have to say is about the uh, credit card purchases, hopefully those things are typed on the bills list every month so we know. And getting back to buying these golf balls, uh, you know, I, I read in the, in the newspapers, in the classified sections, I see athletic bids being advertised for Wissahickon School District. Other school districts are going out for athletic supplies bids. One of these golf ball purchases was 15 or 18 dozen balls. That was just one purchase from Dick's on the credit card. So, you know, let's get the... Let's get the uh, athletic department and the athletic director uh, getting the needs of all the teams funneled up through and getting the supplies purchased on a, uh, you know, a basis where you're getting quantity discounts. Uh, I want to commend Dr. Malik too, for, uh, for pointing out that the Act 34 original budget for Skyview was $32.9 million, and it came in at $39.5 million. That's a 21 percent uh, overage, $7 million over the original presentation to the public. Uh, you know, 21% over budget to build that building that you didn't need. And uh, the student enrollment was projected at 65.14. We missed that by 26% because we're only at 47.93 as we speak now. So it's kind of a wash. Yeah. <laughs> I just couldn't believe those numbers. And you didn't need the building, which caused a lot of problems, uh, uh, at, you know, later on. Um, I asked the question, you know, there's one thing that the board, you know, needs to understand that when somebody stands up here, they're a taxpayer, they're paying taxes, they should get answers. I don't know, I don't know why there's quiet on the board, you know, when I say where was the superintendent's academy held? He knows where it was held. Why don't you call upon him to let me know because I paid the bill, part of the bill. You know, it's just, that's the one thing that's missing. I don't know where that advisement's coming from. I don't know how you're advised by a board not to answer questions from people that are coming to this meeting. I, I'm really perplexed at that because that doesn't happen in, in other districts. People get answers. I don't know where you're getting that direction not to answer the taxpayers' questions that come up here. I really don't. So that's one thing that's kind of missing. You know, that, that discourse, I mean, a simple question, the superintendent's there, he knows where he went. Simple answer. Where did you go to the superintendent's academy? You know, I, I can ask anything and I won't get an answer. But you're to call on your administrators and say, hey, can you, can you fill Mr. Bickelman in on this? 
or Mr. Andrews or, you know, anybody. That's one thing that's missing that, you know, I thought my vote would bring about. But it's still not there. And, and that needs to be there. I mean, I, I just don't get that. I don't know if your solicitor is advising you. I don't know if the superintendent's advising you. I just don't understand it. And that's a piece that's missing that could bring so much trust because not answering the question looks a lot worse than answering it. It really Mr. does. Mr. Bickelman, I'm sorry, that's three minutes. All right. And to somewhat answer your question, I can tell you that no official direction has been given to any board members to not answer questions. It's generally speaking our policy, our practice to not engage into a dialogue. Um, it's for the sake of your time, for the sake of our time. Um, when possible, we can give you answers. Um, if it's my time you're concerned about, I stay at home. I, no, I understand I that if we engage in dialogue back and forth between the podium and, so and us. Three minutes. I understand, and we'll, we can take that under advisement going forward, but that's the rationale that we've been going under. So. Three minutes, I sat down. So you can answer my question in that three minutes. Okay. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm here for a reason. Okay, thank you. If that would change, I would stay home. <laughs> Dr. Malik. Jim Malik, Worcester. Um, I thought that uh, Mr. Ryan was going to update us on his hearing, and I wouldn't have to. So, Mr. Ryan, correct me if I get any of this wrong, because I don't want anybody to get the wrong impression. So, um, there was a hearing on the 10th from Mr. Ryan at the uh, Magisterial Court. I was disappointed. I didn't see anybody there. I didn't see any of you guys there at all. It was kind of disappointing. And um, I was hoping Mr. Ryan would enlighten us, but I'll, I'll enlighten everybody here. Um, as you guys all know, he was charged with public drunkenness and similar misconduct. And he pled not guilty. I was there. Mr. Andrews was there. I didn't see any of you folks there. And at the hearing, apparently a deal was struck. And, you know, correct me if I get this wrong. In which you have to complete 24 hours of community service by March 28th. Right? Is that pretty much accurate? Your comments can be addressed to me. Okay. Um, and oh, I don't want to get it wrong so that you, he was not found not guilty. So he's got to do 24 hours of community service. Now, Excuse me, you told me to correct you if you were wrong okay. um, by saying that I was not found not guilty. Right. Uh, the, the opposite of that would be guilty, which is not the case. If you would like the official, you were there, Mr. Andrews is there. Right. If I complete 24 hours of community service by March 28th, which is the continuation date of my trial date, all charges will be dismissed. That is it. Right. That, that is what the judge ordered. Right. Thank you. So you're doing 24 hours community service for a reason. Right? It's not because you're innocent. Um, the judge recommended it in the future if it, to consume less alcohol, to use Uber, and she hoped your lessons were learned. Now, that doesn't imply innocence to me. So now what I'm here to say is understanding all that, the board should have some kind of an opinion as to what you should do. I have my own opinion. I think it's a problem, okay? I don't think you can sit up there anymore, to be honest with you. Even if the charges are dropped, okay, there's, that doesn't imply innocence. I think it's a problem. Mr. Mullick, I have yeah. no problem with Mr. Ryan staying on the sport. Well, I understand you'll wear it as a badge of honor. And I have a problem with you saying what you just did. Dr. Mullick, your three minutes is up. Okay. 
And I understand you want to limit public comment. And you're a find a free speech to be intolerable. But as a chair, the chair of the board, you should, my, you should have my something. My title is president of the board? Uh, president of the board. And you find my comments on this disgusting. I find that our policy states that you have three minutes for your courtesy right. of the floor and, and that you time found has it, passed. And you found it disgusting. Maybe you should step up to the plate and make a comment. Because I find your behavior somewhat suspect in all this. Anyone else for courtesy of the floor? Mr. Andrews. Mr. Beam, you can go next. John Andrews, Law of Providence. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the, the Property and Transportation Committee has uh, in their hands a, a, a set of proposed uh, estimates for different kinds of work at the uh, Arcola Auditorium. One of them is to uh, take out all the seats, store them, and then replace them for $280,000. It's interesting that six and a half years ago, the seats were, were bought, the old seats were removed, the new seats were installed, all of that for only 180000 So, So, uh, you know, hopefully, the, if there's a good bidding competition, we get better prices, but uh, uh, we have limited funds. I think you would all agree to that. And uh, so we need a lot of care in, in how we uh, plan out these uh, activities, uh, that being just an example. Uh, the other thing is that with regard to this annual budget proposal, like all others uh, that I've witnessed over a dozen or so years in this room, uh, there's no mention of enrollment projections for the coming year. And uh, now that makes no sense to me and it, it, it violates a uh, a PDE document uh, that was prepared uh, and distributed uh, a dozen or so years ago uh, on uh, on school finance 101 because the budget should have some relation to the number of products to be delivered and, and clearly the number of students being educated is, is the output of the district. Uh, <coughs> And uh, uh, for the coming year, the, most of the drop-off is in grade eight, a drop of 60 students. And uh, other than that, things are kind of flat. So, uh, you know, if we have a student-teacher ratio of, of 12, uh, that would indicate, uh, you know, 12 faculty positions uh, being unnecessary, and that would be a considerable savings. Uh, and, Mr. Andrews, uh, yes, please wrap up. I, I, uh, I understand that, uh, Ms. Timekeeper. Uh, in, in grades K to 4, these are the grades that lead to higher grade enrollments in the future, and interestingly, the Mithac, the uh, Malone and McGrew, McBroom projections for the coming year, uh, their low estimate was 1672, the medium estimate 1637, their high estimate 1628. Uh, Mr. Andrews, please wrap up. I think that, uh, you know, we need some better numbers than that. You'd think the low, num low estimate would be below the high estimate. Mr. Andrews. Your time is up. And uh, I also note that uh, seven recent projections by the County Planning Commission show that increases in enrollment over the next decade in Abington, Lower Marion, Colonial, Cheltenham, and Lower Merland 
So uh, we need some good advice relative to uh, what Mr. Navarrete would like to accomplish with regard to Audubon and Arrowhead in the, by the end of this year. Thank you. Mr. Beam, thank you for your patience. Jim Beam, Worcester. I will be brief. I just want to congratulate all of you. This was the first meeting for, for a number of you. Um, this is a new board. A number of things have been discussed tonight about things that happened in the past, getting to be in the distant past. They still affect us. These things come back to affect us. But I think this was a very positive start. I think you all clearly have the best interests of this district and its students and everyone associated with Methacton at heart. And I think coupled with the administration and with the faculty and with everyone coming together in this community, I think this is a, a new beginning and a real opportunity for positive change and positive moving forward of this district. So I just want to encourage you to keep keep on doing what you're doing. You're going to have people who are going to continue to uh, keep an eye on you uh, about everything you do. You know that. We all know that. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's a good thing. It's part of our democracy. Um, but tonight has been a very good night and I congratulate you and uh, I wish you all the best going forward. Thank you. Anyone else for courtesy of the floor? Okay. Can I get a motion to adjourn? First, second, meeting adjourned.